Welcome to Learn Right Biology. We are still on complexity, level of organization in living things. We are lying that there is problem with complexity. And I gave you some um, information so that you understand what's meant by surface area to volume ratio. I use the presence of villi, presence of alveoli, presence of root hairs, and a flatness in a flat worms, the platyhelminths, to illustrate how problems with complexity have been solved. But for the purpose of our examination, let us use this lesson to summarize how terrestrial animals have managed to solve their problem with complexity. That's naturally adaptation, how they adapted to solve the problems with the complexity. Number one. Presence of lungs increases surface area to volume ratio. And when we say lungs, we are talking about what lungs are. And don't forget lungs have a simplest unit, basic unit referred to as alveoli. Then two, ventilation movement to facilitate gaseous exchange. You know, breathing in and breathing out. That's what we call ventilation movement. You know, ventilation is to, you know, replacement of still air with fresh air. And if you have this in animals, you know, how vertebrates, for instance, the mechanism of breathing, that's what we are talking about. Inhalation and exhalation, ventilation movement, how the rib cage, intercostal muscle contract and relax. To reduce pressure in the thoracic cavity as compared to atmospheric pressure for air to be forced in through the nostril. That is what is summarized as ventilation movement. To ensure that atmospheric air have contact with respiratory surface, that is the lungs. So that should even be the first one. And the second one being how the lungs are modified to increase lack of area to volume ratio. Then the third one, internal transport system. That is not the end. When the air gets to the lungs and oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the bloodstream, the whole system, internal transport system, that is made up of blood, blood vessels, and the heart. To ensure that the blood, which is the medium of transport, is carried to all parts of the body, carrying the oxygen. Then number four, the blood alone cannot do that, but respiratory pigment. Some organisms have hemocyanin as a respiratory pigment. Some have hemoglobin. Mamas have hemoglobin that picks oxygen. I hope it is clear. So I have four points for you in terms of gaseous exchange. How terrestrial animals have managed the problem of complexity in order to be able to ensure effective gaseous exchange. Ventilation movement to bring air to contact with respiratory surface. Two, presence of respiratory surface, because the entire body is not respiratory surface, as in unicellular organism. So air passes through the nostril and gets to respiratory surface. How does the air manage to get to respiratory surface? That is through ventilation movement. And when it gets to respiratory surface, it's adapted because it also ensures increased surface area to volume ratio, as if the lungs were unicellular organism. So that the transport mechanism also will take it from there. That is the presence of transporting medium, blood. 
that will flow through the vessels. And the force with which the blood flows is provided by the heart. And that even though the blood is flowing, the ability of the blood to carry the oxygen is the presence of respiratory pigment. We are giving example in mama, by some other organism, like snails, or arthropods, they also have the respiratory pigment. But for the purpose of your age and the level of this course, it's okay. As you move on, we'll give more examples and you understand. Thank you. Let's meet in the next lesson where we look at what unicellular organism and multicellular organism, how we can differentiate between them. We are going to summarize because we have looked at both advantages and disadvantages of life at both levels. Let's do it together in the next lesson. Bye for now.